Today by request, I'm going to do a PlayStation 1 ripping video. I'm going to show you how easy it can be and how tricky it can be, depending on the circumstances and what source file you're working with. So I'm going to take uh, one of my favorite ripping programs, Pocket ISO. Now we have the game extracted to a directory. And the first game I'm going to work with is going to be Beast Wars Transformers. I'm going to simply open up the bin file. Usually the first bin is all you need. I'm going to analyze it to see what video and audio files are within that can be removed or amended. So we have uh, four audio streams and a little bit over a half dozen video streams. I'm going to select all of these. And this next step is very important. I generally, uh, the file that you're working with is the file that's going to have the video and audio removed. You're going to want to back this file up into a backup folder. Just make one. Once that is said and done, then you can do whatever you want. And if you make a mistake, you can revert right back to this file by copying it from the backup folder. <coughs> So now that that is analyzed, I'm going to process it. And this is going to remove all the files that I selected here because I chose rip and I decided to rip all the audio and all the video. And for the most part, a majority of games that you work with, you could just pretty much just take the audio and video out and it'll run just fine. But the next example I'm going to show you is a little bit different. <coughs> I'm doing just a little bit of multitasking right now, so there's going to be a little bit of delay in this process. Now while this is ripping, I'm going to switch over to the SNES Classic, and I'm going to show you one game that I ripped a particular way by taking all the video and audio out, and the little result I had from doing that. Like they say, no two snowflakes are the same. You're going to see this with a PlayStation 1 game called Gradius Gaiden, a great shmup game in the Gradius series. This was not released in the United States. It was only released overseas. By ripping all the video and audio out of the game... I got this little result here, as you will see in a second. Now, if you have any familiarity with Gradius, you'll realize that after you defeat a wave of enemies, a power-up generally displays on the screen, and you're able to get it and power up accordingly. But watch what happens when I defeat a wave of enemies here. The power-ups are invisible right now. So I'm getting them, but they're invisible. Like I said, there's a myriad of different ways that you could rip games and many, many different results. It just takes trial and error and a little bit of practice. I'm going to go back to the computer now. Now that this is, that is done processing, I have a generalized 38 megabyte working file there, but I'm going to uncompress it. By uncompressing it, it's going to destroy the first bin file, but luckily I backed that up into here, so I can come right back to it. So when that is done uncompressing, I'm going to open up another program I love for the end result, and this converts them into eBoots for the PlayStation 1, as well as... Uh, NES Classic and SNES Classic. So I'm going to select this file that has had the audio and video removed. I'm just going to leave the settings alone for now. I have compression level of the 9. Let's see what we have to work with here. And while that's doing that little compression process, 
I'm going into my uh, Heshi directory. And the uh, Gradius Gaiden, I ripped it more than one different way. I made a backup folder here. And you notice that the folder that is within is identical each time, but I renamed them so I could back them up to the main Heshi directory when I'm done. So the one with the invisible graphics is right here. And then I did another rip, and I'll show you how I did that rip in a moment. I'm actually gonna go to the Gradius Gated and show you how I did it. But this one's all done, so I'm gonna go to uh, the Gradius Gated. It's my secondary rip file. And so, this is where things get a little bit more complicated here. But I go into my directory here. I don't have a bin file to work with. I have an ECM file, but if you get the ECM tools, which is another program that I use, the on ECM, I'm just gonna drag this ECM file right to it. And it's going to decompress it into a bin file that I can work with using Pocket ISO and the Pop Station GUI, GUI. So I'm going to let that uncompress. And the invisible graphics, I'll show you how I arrived at getting the invisible graphics. So I'm using Pop Station GUI to open this. I'm analyzing it. Generally, you follow the analyze, process, and uncompress right in a row. And like I said, for the most part, you won't have issues. But I basically ripped all of the audio and all the video out, and I got invisible graphics. But if you use this little option here called smallest video source, it'll take the smallest video you have as the main video instead of removing these completely. So I'll have these three videos here. It'll just keep the smallest of the videos. So I just uh, process and uncompress it just like so. Or if I find a problematic file, I could just outright not even select it at all. I mean, there's, as you can see, countless ways to rip this. And this is just using Pocket ISO alone. I also use other ripping programs such as Turbo ISO. You can go to my NES Classic Ripping videos and see some of the stuff I've done with that. But anyways, I'm going to take this backup file I have. The one that was ripped with the smallest video source. Now I'm going to take just the eboot file right now. Now I'm going to go into my hashi directory, the folder that has the invisible graphics one, and replace that eboot file. Everything else remains the same. And I already ripped the Transformers game over, and I got that down to... Let's see what I have that size at. 32 megabytes. Now I'm going to flash the, the Gradius Gaiden over in a moment here. But I'm going to show you generally, once you've ripped these games, how you're going to want to add them via hashi. I'm going into the ISO rip folder. And I have it right in here, this directory here. It says all files, but normally when you first open hashi, it's going to be under games and apps, and that is an unrecognizable format. So you're going to want to choose all files. And then once you add this, this extension of whatever file you add is going to be in PBP format. And one little side note here, most ROM and PC games, etc. can run in compressed format. If you have the compressed option on via Hashi, it's going to take the C-boot, which is already compressed, and 7-zip it. You're not going to want that. So I'm going up to that file that I just added. And I'm going to right click on it and click decompress. Then I'm going to add this like normal. Add my little PSX prefix. And then this PBP, after the forward slash, I'm going to change to PSX. And I'm going to add art. I believe I have art for this already. To 
Hopefully the index then finds it fast. If I don't find it quickly, I'll just uh, flash it without it for now. I don't want to hold up the video just for the process of adding art. Okay, anyways, I found it, so no biggie there. So I have that added. I replaced the Gradius file. I'm going to sync these over, but before I sync them over, I'm going to show you the modules that I have installed to play PlayStation 1. I have the BIOS for PCSX rearmed. It says optional, but you're going to find some games will actually run better if you have it installed. So I'd recommend just installing it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Of course, you're going to need RetroArch, and you could use either version of RetroArch that's in my core set. And then PCX rearmed I have. So anyways, I have PCX Rearm, the PCSX Rearm Neon uh, BIOS, and then I have RetroArch installed. Now I'm going to flash these over using Custom Folder Manager. Make sure everything's nice and dandy here. So I have the Beast Wars Transformers that I just added. Gradius Gaiden, the different version where I did the smallest video source. And let's see how this translates over to the NES, SNES Classic in a moment here. Once this flash and process is done, I'll switch over. Like I said, there's uh, countless other ways you can rip games, and if you watch some of my other uh, NES Classic ripping videos, you'll see. You might pull up a game like Road Rash or Crash Bandicoot 1 and just notice a very, very big difference as far as the ripping process due to the general structure of the game from that point. Twisted Metal 1 is a different one. I mean, there's just so many PlayStation 1 games and so many different ways to rip them. So we're going to test out this other Gradius rip, and we're going to test out the Beast Wars uh, Transformers game and see how that translates over to the SNES Classic. Like I said, you can rip these PlayStation 1 games in many different ways. Just be prepared to do backups so you can keep track of what you're doing. And uh, after a flash process, like I said before, you may want to power off the system and power it right back on so you can get controller support. Every once in a while you're flash and you won't have controller support. So I turn it off and right back on and I should be able to use my controller right away. And we'll test out the Gradius and uh, I use the smallest video source rather than just ripping all the videos out entirely. No, it said actually uh, replace the video with the same small video for every video instance, so that's how that smallest video source works. So like your but watch what happens. You're going to think you just smoke some pot and you're going to get a little bit of a psychedelic uh, experience here with this result from doing the smallest video source. Big Viper. Shield. And sometimes, depending on how you rip games, there might be uh, an infinitesimal, a very small amount of games that won't uh, rip properly and they won't make it past the video. But look at this. Nice little nifty... I'm seeing the graphics, but there's a little bit of a glitch here. I think it's kind of cool in a way. And of course, it is it's possible to rip it so you get normal graphics too. You just have to find the right setup to do it. Now we're going to try out Beast Wars Transformers and see how that ripped. See if I have any kind of glitches or anything. And this has all video and all music removed. And I will do more videos on the ripping process, and feel free to check out my old NES Classic ripping videos. They all apply to the SNES Classic. So far, so good. 
But every once in a while, you may uh, rip a video out and find the game just doesn't start because it crashes at that point. So using the smallest video source is the best thing to do in that case. Maximal start conditionless. This looks like this 32 megabyte rip has turned out good so far. Well, this one turned out okay. Hope you enjoyed the PS1 ripping video. I'll do more videos on the ripping process. And like I said, check out my other videos. There'll be more videos to come. Thanks for watching.